What are some of the things that prohibit people from voting, especially in, 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 in consequential elections? One is believing it matters. Mm. Uh, I, I, I do not subscribe to the notion that voters are apathetic. It's rarely apathy. It is usually disillusionment, despair, or simply that they disbelieve that change is possible because they live in communities where change has never happened. And so a lot of the work that we've done on voter engagement has been about localizing, hyper-localizing why it matters and then expanding the aperture so people see, if I can do this thing, then this next thing happens and this next thing happens. Part of addressing the disbelief is also winning elections. People believe they can have more when they see someone get something. You play, the, the surgeon who plays the lottery increases dramatically in the state where the last winner got it. And so human psychology says, if you can show that there is a value to a behavior, more people will engage. Look, part of the challenge was building, first and foremost, the imagination. People believing that this was a possibility. Uh, the second was the conscience. It was showing people the consequences of not acting. So I would look at my 18 race as sort of the imagination race, showing people that you should pay attention to Georgia. 2020 and 2021, uh, and again in 22, was the conscience race. Here's what happens in America and Georgia if we don't act. And I think this third race, which will be our third cycle, will be the opportunity to show change, that Georgia is stepping fully into its posture. As a woman of color, it is difficult to solve for both racism and misogyny at the same time. Uh, but we've made some progress on both. And what I think is even more important is that she comes with a proven set of skills, a phalanx of policies, and a lived experience that is reflective of the needs and values of not only Georgians, but Americans. More than anything, though, they are investing in the state. Uh, what had preceded a lot of the work in, that we were able to you know, leverage in 18, 20, 21, 22 was that no one paid attention. No one believed it was possible. And that was the imagination piece. Uh, once we did it, showing we could do it again, at least in part, was 22. And that was by making certain that Senator Warnock was reelected. And while you know, I, I didn't get the job, we had a really strong base. And we were one of the few states that did not have a precipitous drop in black vote voters. And so what we can do in 24 is harness all of those things using the incredible star power, not just of Vice President Harris and Governor Waltz, but using the star power of voters who know that people are paying attention and mm. they care about our voices. And that more than anything gets people to vote. When people think that you want to hear what they have to say, they don't shut up much like me. Let's go expand on that point because I think it's an important one. We're gonna talk about voter suppression later on in our discussion, but voter engagement. Um, that is something where you've seen a real shift in these last four weeks with Vice President Harris on top of the ticket. Can you talk about the importance of voter engagement and what you see, particularly in a place like Georgia, is the most important thing for that campaign to do? We have to remember, we've been going through this, you know, soon hopefully to be canceled Trump show for a very long time. I mean, this was, this was 2016, 2015, but he started his invective in 2014. And so we've had a very long stretch of this dismal, hate-filled invective. And we have twice been able to counter it, once winning the popular vote with, uh, Vice, with Secretary Clinton, the second time actually winning the election with President Biden, but it still feels like you're watching the same show. You've had the same characters on the stage, the same main characters. I love and respect and revere Joe Biden. I think he has done this nation an incredible service. But there is something about having new characters. <laughs> there is something about having a new narrative and a new energy and a new show. And I, I'm sorry for using so much uh, you know, television metaphor, but for the American people, for Georgia in particular, what she signals is not just something new in terms of the name, but profile, identity, responsibility. She understands in a different way. There's also a generational change. Uh, she is the first Gen X uh, nominee that we have had. And so all of those pieces matter and they come together in this avatar that is Vice President Harris. And for voters, they can find themselves in her and they can see a future in her success for themselves. Obviously.